Hello everyone. So welcome to our webinar today. Thanks for joining us. I actually hope that you are staying safe and healthy in this uh, CMCO period. So uh, my name is Ken, uh, host for today's webinar. The topic for our today webinar will be the power of combining 5G and also AI, as you can see in the screen. Recently, there's a lot of people asking actually why is 5G and then how will the 5G impact our life? And also AI is a very hot topic in this recent year. So later we will go through, uh, Dr. Tan will go through actually what is the power of combining these two, these two items in this uh, Industrial Revolution 4.0. So before we start our webinar tonight, uh, just simple go through our today flow. This webinar will be around one hour. It will consist of 45 minutes of the talk and also the last 15 minutes will be the Q&S section. Okay, so for those who have uh, some questions you would like to ask, you can write it down in the Q&A tab in this uh, Zoom function. So make sure you write in the Q&A tab, you are not in the chat box. So in the last 15 minutes, we can review it together. Okay. Our speaker today will be Dr. Tam. Okay. He is an assistant professor from our Li Gong Chen of Faculty of Engineering and Science. Uh, he graduated from a Bachelor of Engineering, Telecommunications, and complete his uh, Doctor of Philosophy in Computer Networking uh, from University of Malaya. He specialized in IoT, Internet of Things, and also machine learning as well as the radio resource management, such as a 4G and also 5G. So without any delay, let's welcome our speaker of the day, Dr. Tam. Thanks, Ken, for the introduction. So uh, a very good evening to everyone. So uh, welcome to this uh, webinar. So uh, my name is uh, Tam, and I'm an assistant professor from Department of uh, Electrical and Electronic Engineering, Lee Kong Chen Faculty of Engineering and Science. So today I will talk about the power of combining uh, 5G and AI. So 5G and AI, I believe that these two terms have crossed your mind, but you might wonder what are them. So this talk aims to shed some light on 5G and AI, and also how actually we can combine them in order to boost the performance of next generation's uh, networks. Right, so these are some uh, introduction about my background. So uh, my research uh, interest is uh, wireless uh, communications and uh, artificial uh, intelligence. So uh, as you can see from the slide, I was uh, honored to appear in a few uh, mass media. So for example, there are uh, newspapers such as uh, Oriental uh, Daily News as indicated by uh, number one and also uh, number three. And also I appear in the Sinchu uh, daily uh, newspaper, so as indicated at uh, number four. So uh, beside that, I appear in radio broadcasting in uh, IFM and living uh, delight in a TV, a TV channel. So all the content was about the current trend and developments in uh, 5G and AI. So uh, except the number four where I was granted an international uh, research uh, project as the uh, project uh, leader. So uh, without further uh, ado, let's talk about what is uh, 5G. So 5G stands for fifth uh, generation's uh, mobile networks. So obviously uh, the previous uh, generation of mobile networks are 1G, 2nd G, 3G, 4G. Uh, so these four uh, generations. So I would like to talk about them briefly okay, before I proceed to discuss about the 5G. So, First generations, the 1G. So 1G was launched in 1980s. So uh, 1G delivered the analog uh, voice. Then comes to the second generation, which is the 2G. So uh, you all may familiar with the name, the GSM. So GSM stands for the Global System for Mobile Communications. So this second generation was uh, released in 1990s. So uh, using these uh, second generation uh, technologies, um, it introduced the digital voice. So digital voice means that your human voice is encoded into the digital format before transmitting them over the air. So in this way, your voice actually can be hear uh, clearly, more clearer, right? But the disadvantages of the second generation is the speed is rather limited. It can only support up to 100 kilobit uh, per second. And come to the 3G. So the 3G, uh, the synonym is also called HSPS, which stands for the High Speed Packet Access uh, Network. 
All right. So this one actually uh, brought the uh, mobile data, so it can reach up to 100 megabit uh, per second. So with this kind of the uh, speed uh, capacity, uh, actually it enables mobile users to perform some lightweight internet uh, serving uh, activities. And in the 20, uh, 2010s, we have arrived at the fourth uh, generation of 4G. So, uh, I am sure uh, most of you are familiar with the 4G. So, uh, if you are using the mobile phones, okay, if you are using the mobile phones, and you can actually find the 4G uh, symbols near the signal bars, which indicates that you are actually using the 4G uh, services. So, 4G uh, can offer up to one gigabit per second, and with this kind of speed, it can actually enable uh, users to play the apps such as the Facebook, Twitter, or IG, and watch the stream videos such as the YouTube or uh, the Netflix. Okay, and now the new decades have uh, arrived. Okay, and 5G is uh, ready. Okay, so it is designed with an extended capacity of 10 gigabit per second to enable next generation's user experience and deliver internet of everything. So in other words, 5G can connect virtually everyone and everything together, including machines, objects, and devices. So there are two driving forces behind the 5G uh, development. The first one would be the International Telecommunications uh, Union, uh, stands for ITU. And the second one would be the third generation uh, partnership project. Uh, call, uh, we label it as 3GPP. So the role of ITU is to set the standards and requirement for any telecommunications technologies, including 5G. Whereas the role of 3GPP is to develop the technologies for the technologies that set by the ITU, so including the 5Gs. So 3GPP is pushing very hard in order to make the 5G a realized network. So uh, 5G will impact every industry, making uh, safer transportation, remote healthcare, precision agriculture, digitized logistics, and more a uh, reality. So 5G services can be divided into three categories, namely enhanced mobile broadband, so-called EMBB, massive machine type communication, so-called MMTC, and also the ultra reliable low latency, or in short term, URLLC. So all these three categories, they serve the mobile users in different scenarios with different uh, requirements. So uh, let's take a look at the first uh, category, which is the EMBB. So the supported data rate in this category should be up to 10 gigabit per second. And obviously, it is designed to serve a uh, high bandwidth uh, services. So, for example, the virtual uh, reality or augmented uh, reality. So, imagine you would like to attend a concert, but somehow you could not attend it physically due to some reason. So, by using the virtual uh, reality uh, handset, you can actually watch the concert live at your own uh, location, which uh, provide you an immersive 3D uh, experience. Of course, another example would be the augmented reality, which is the one that uh, I am using. Okay, so uh, for example, uh, because now I'm choosing the virtual background, so actually I can choose a different virtual background. So this is one type of the augmented reality. Of course, uh, if we are saying uh, if we are using the five G uh, services, uh, we can add many complex uh, background features to ourselves to make it a more uh, more real in others environment. Okay, so now I will revert back to my uh, blue color background. All right. So, um, so under this uh, EMBB category, mobile uh, users can also watch the three uh, D, the three dimensional, uh, ultra high definitions, or or the four K uh, stream uh, videos. All right. And also beside that, we can play actually the club game without actually downloading the games. So uh, I, I, remem I remember in the last two weeks, one of the popular uh, gaming platforms, actually they offer the free downloads to the popular games, the Grand Theft Auto uh, 5. Okay, so I'm sure some of you have uh, downloaded the game, but for those who are unaware of this one, have you wondered how big is the video game file size? Okay, 
So let me tell you the answer, okay? The video game file size will be downloaded is around 80 gigabytes for that. So this actually will consume a lot of space from your hard disk, okay? So by using the 5G services, the limited storage uh, issue can actually be resolved immediately. So next, we move to the second uh, category, which is the MMTC, which is designed for Internet of Things, IoT, smart home, and a uh, smart uh, city. So the target density in this category is 1 million devices uh, per kilometer of coverage uh, area. So for the smart home, okay, we can actually have the smart metering system, which can be offered by the TNB. So a uh, smart meter enables uh, you to manage your electricity better by monitoring what you are actually using. So coupling with uh, smart appliances such as smart uh, aircon, they can actually communicate among each other, which will generate better overall energy efficiency. And from a broader uh, perspective, smart sensors such as a camera that utilize uh, videos analytics can monitor the traffic congestion level in any city. And this kind of data can enable local authorities to perform smart traffic management in order to achieve the seamless mobility. And the next one comes to the third uh, category, which is the URLLC, which is designed for critical uh, missions. So in this category, the end-to-end -end, uh, latency target should be as low as, as one millisecond for automotive and automation interactions. So imagine, you are sitting in a car with autopilot modes and actually each vehicle, they can communicate among each other through the V2X. So V2X stands for vehicles to vehicle communications. So if there are some cars uh, sensing some obstacle in front, it will be critical and delay sensitive to send this emergency uh, message to nearby vehicles. So likewise, the so-called golden hour in emergency uh, medicine also requires this kind of reliable and low latency uh, connections. So as you can see from a uh, big picture, 5G services actually target a uh, very broad services, IoT, smart home, and smart city. So uh, when the 5G services come, I believe it will benefit a lot of a uh, community. So next, I will provide a high level overview about the network architectures of home internet versus uh, 4G before I proceed to describe more about 5G's uh, network architecture. So uh, here in this figure, we have uh, the upper figure and also we have the bottom figure. So for the upper figure, it shows the typical scenario of home internet subscriber, such as Times uh, Unify or StreamMax. So as an example, uh, a user connects, a user here connects to a Wi-Fi access point and uh, it try to uh, access to the app such as uh, Facebook or YouTube. So actually this request will be forwarded to a backbone uh, network consisting of a lot of routers and reach the applications uh, server. So uh, if you are watching a YouTube video, the request actually will find the YouTube server located in the internet where the relevant video files are stored. So once you click your play button on either your mobile phones or laptop, the video files will be downloaded and transferred to your device. And uh, the bottom figure shows the 4G's network architecture, which has some similarities uh, with the home internet subscriber. So in this scenario, a mobile user on a street connects to a nearby 4G uh, base station, and this request will be forwarded to uh, another backbone network in order to access the services. So again, if the user uh, is uh, watching YouTube, the similar mechanisms uh, that I described for the home internet will be uh, applied to this uh, 4G uh, scenario. Okay, so from here, actually, from these two figures, you can see the difference is that uh, the access network between the 4G and the home internet they are different. Okay, so uh, for the 4G's mobile terminals, they need to reach a far uh, a farer's uh, base station, which is the 4G base station. Whereas actually, uh, for example, this is the model. Actually, it will be connected through the wired, uh, wired, for example, like the uh, optical fibers. So there are different kind of the access networks. 
So uh, come to the 5G's uh, network uh, architecture. Okay, so uh, this figure shows the uh, 5G network architecture. So as mentioned, 5G will support three types of uh, services, namely enhanced uh, mobile broadband uh, service, okay? Then the massive um, machine type communication and ultra, reli uh, ultra reliable low latency uh, services, right? So all these services, as I mentioned, they have a different latency and speed requirements. So how actually we can divide them? So this is enabled by using a 5G key technology called network slicing. Okay, so this is called network slicing. So as the name implies, network slicing means you chop the entire network resources in slide in a virtual way. Okay, so as you can see, compared to the 4G network architecture, the backbone of the 5G actually is the virtual. It will become the virtual instead of the physical backbone uh, network. So what does it mean by virtual? I give you an example. I'm sure most of you either uh, uh, Google Drive or Dropbox to store some uh, documents or video files. So these services actually belong to the virtual storage where you don't need a SSD hard disk to store your content. So of course, there are more technologies uh, involved in network slicing such as uh, network functions, virtualizations, and software defined network. So I will not talk about the details of this uh, technology due to the uh, time limitations. So in short, network slicing allows the telecommunications operators, so-called telco operators, to customize various subscription plans to a customer. So uh, as a reference, the current practice in the 4G telco uh, company is to offer various 4G plans with different data quota in combination with unlimited call and also the SMS. But the issue is that they cannot vary either speed or latency per subscription. All the latency and speed they will encounter the same performance. So this is the power of the 5G, which will chop them one by one and assign all these specific uh, services to a different uh, customer based on their own needs. So this shows that 5G is not only offer a very high ultra broadband, but actually it will offer a much flexibility in terms of the operations. So uh, apart from the network slicing, 5G technology also include the millimeter wave and a uh, massive uh, MIMO. So massive MIMO stands for uh, multiple input, uh, multiple uh, outputs, right? So all these actually are the cutting edge uh, technology. So definitely the frequency range for 5G is much higher than uh, 4G. So in terms of the frequency uh, spectrum, the millimeter wave is at uh, 30 to 300 uh, gigahertz. Okay, so by using the standard formula, the C equal to F lambda, where, where the lambda is the wavelength. So uh, it is very obvious that the 5G's millimeter wave had shorter wavelength. Okay, and because of this uh, characteristic, 5G millimeter wave can't travel well through the buildings and uh, obstacles. So furthermore, uh, 5G uh, millimeter waves tend to be absorbed by the plants and uh, rain. Okay, so this is aligned with the fact that the rain attenuation is severe for frequency larger than uh, 10 gigahertz, right? So uh, the proposed solution is to use uh, thousands of the base station of the small cell uh, base station, okay? Um, so as you can see, this is the uh, so-called macro base station, then it has the massive MIMO. So uh, by placing all these small cell base stations surrounding the, uh, surrounding the macro base station, actually this signal can be transmitted efficiently around the obstacle to the mobile devices okay so in other words this kind of the deployment they can actually have a characteristic brought by the millimeter wave right so uh even if the small cell uh base station provide a low power consumptions and high performance. So a large scale uh, deployment of this uh, base station. Okay, so as indicated by this uh, figure, so uh, there are a lot of base station that is installed on top of each uh, building. Actually, uh, this kind of uh, large scale deployment, they will increase the energy consumption. Okay, so which raise the energy consumption uh, issue, all right? So there is an ongoing research uh, dedicated to uh, exploring different ways to uh, make 5G small scale, small cell base stations uh, less 
power intensive. So one way is that we can actually turn on and off the base station in order to save the transmission uh, energy. Okay, so let's say you are given a deployment of maybe uh, 10 base stations. Okay, can we actually manually to do the configuration? I believe we can do it manually because it is just a few of base station. But the question is how to manage and maintain thousands of the base station. Okay, so this one cannot be done uh, with the human efforts. Okay, so of course, one of the solutions is to use artificial intelligence, the so called AI. So uh, we can manage the 5G base station by using the deep reinforcement learning. Okay, so deep, deep reinforcement learning is one of the popular AI uh, techniques. So basically, it is a combination of the deep learning and the reinforcement learning so in this slide I will talk about the deep learning and proceed to talk about the reinforcement learning in the uh, next uh, slide right so uh, deep learning as the name implies deep learning is learning from a training uh, set okay and then applying that learning to a new data set so I give an example okay it is a uh, one of one example of the deep learning uh, application is that you use your face for the phone unlocking. Okay, I'm sure this one is quite familiar. Actually, the phone performs the facial recognitions. Uh, you might wonder how does it recognize uh, your, fa uh, your face, right? So first and foremost, okay, it needs the training data to know that this person is the phone's uh, owner. So still remember when you are uh, setting up your new phone, okay, you actually will rotate your head, okay, to a various uh, orientations, okay, so that the phone can learn your face from various uh, angle and perspective, okay. So uh, technically uh, speaking, the phone actually uses a neural network to extract the features from your face, such as uh, eye, your eyebrow, your lips, and also the ears, okay. So and when you are using, okay, when you are using for phone unlocking in uh, normal days, the face are uh, projected, okay, to uh, to the phone camera belong to the testing uh, data. So even when you are wearing a cap, okay, let's say for myself, I'm wearing a cap, the phone will still be able to recognize you are the phone owner by extracting the physical feature, okay. So actually, the phone camera will will try to uh, recognize you are the owner by extracting all the unique feature that only you yourself will have okay so this is the uh, deep, uh, deep learning so of course uh, recently uh, due to the covid uh, 19 issue i believe uh, some of you may face the issue in uh, face unlocking when you are wearing a mask okay when you are wearing a mask then it will be difficult for you to do the um, face, face ID uh, unlocking. Okay, so uh, of course this is because your phone does not recognize uh, this object is a mask. Okay, and it feel uh, less confident to recognize you you as the owner. Okay, so it will allow the phone to be unlocked. Okay, based on your current uh, face wearing the mask. Okay, but uh, somehow I already heard that the iOS okay will have a new update to make the users easier to unlock the phone wearing the mask. Okay. So that means with the new updates, actually your phone camera will detect, okay, this one is the mask, okay? So I will subtract this uh, component and try to uh, recognize my owner by extracting other features, okay? In order to increase the uh, confidence, right? So uh, come to the reinforcement uh, learning, So okay? So reinforcement learning is a uh, dynamically uh, learning by adjusting actions based on continuous uh, feedback in order to maximize rewards right so uh, a, a, an example would be playing a computer game such as uh, Mario okay so uh, of course I believe uh, the youngster nowadays they are playing games like a uh, Final Fantasy 7 remake uh, or Animal Crossing okay but nevertheless all of them share the same uh, concept okay for reinforce whether for reinforcement learning or for game play, uh, game playing okay we have four major uh, components okay uh, namely agent okay then you have the rewards okay you have the state and also you have the actions okay so the agents is like a game player okay, where he or she continuously learn from the past uh, or mistake in order to score a battle or win the game okay then of course the reward is the is the game score okay 
So, uh, for example, in the Resident uh, Evil 3 uh, remake, your reward uh, could be how many times you kill the nemesis without uh, any uh, injury, okay? So, uh, whereas for the stable to the actual the game state, okay, while the actions uh, refer to the controlling your character, for example, in Resident Evil, it would be Jill, okay, through your, uh, so uh, as an example, okay, Jill with a knife uh, will definitely run away from the nemesis, whereas the Jill with a bazooka, they can, actually, she can confront the nemesis and try to defeat the nemesis, okay, so in other words, okay, in the context of uh, reinforcement learning, okay, depends on the game state, game state that you are uh, locating, okay? You may actually uh, perform a different uh, actions, okay? So uh, perhaps I can give uh, another uh, example, okay? So let's say, uh, uh, let's say I, I believe uh, some of the potential students are watching this uh, video, okay? So perhaps you are making a decision that you want to study, uh, you want to study foundations and uh, undergraduate degree or not, okay? So you are now, I think the age is around 18, 18 years old, okay? 18 years old, around that, okay? So you try to make the decision. So from there, actually, you may uh, actually reward in terms of the reward. The reward actually may refer to the job prospect. For example, if you decide to uh, study in Utah, okay? How much the job prospect can provide you? How, in other words, okay, in the plain words, how much you can learn, uh, you can earn from your job after you graduate from Utah, okay? So, Another st uh, another state is uh, you already old, you are almost retired, and actually now you are considering to study the uh, either the foundations or uh, or the undergraduate degree. Okay, so when actually you are that old, okay, the studying the so called action will not give you a lot of rewards because you already achieved something that the study actually may give you. Okay. So that means under different state, you can actually consider different actions in order to maximize the potential reward. Right, so based on the deep learning and reinforcement learning, okay, uh, Google DeepMind actually developed an Android, okay, an Android, okay, with the capability of deep reinforcement learning, okay. So the principal idea is very simple, okay, learn, act, get reward learn at get reward and repeat okay learn at get reward okay so this means that actually the the android uh, itself will learn to uh, from the past experience and try to adjust its uh, actions right so uh the figures okay the figure shows an android okay is learning to jump over and hold okay over and hold so these are the whole way we uh, between them we have the panel okay so the, the the android is learning to jump over the hole so there will be several episodes, okay? Uh, we, we normally call it as uh, episode in the context of reinforcement learning, okay? So just like game, you can play uh, many episodes, all right? So, uh, and uh, sometimes you may win and sometimes you, you may lose, all right? So uh, let's take a look at the episode number one, right? So uh, where the Android starts to learn to jump over the, uh, the hole. So of course we can expect the Android jump at the wrong uh, timing and the result is it uh, falls, okay? But after tons of the efforts, okay? In episode N, okay? In episode N, it can be seen that the Android uh, successfully jump over the hole, okay? As you can see from this uh, figure, okay? Jump over the hole, okay? So uh, what, uh, it can be seen the Android, okay? Uh, they actually know the right timing to jump, okay? and how much force it should ex exert in order to land uh, safely. Of course, this episode N is a successful example where the android actually may experience a lot of fallings, okay, a lot of falling cases, okay. So actually this shows that the deep reinforcement learning, after they learn through a multiple episode, they can actually uh, learn how to jump, okay. So one thing to highlight is that we never actually teach the android how to jump, okay. We only tell uh, the Android uh, what reward uh, it will get, okay? For example, jump at the wrong timing. What is the reward? The reward is fall down, then we may actually assign some negative value to that reward, okay? So actually the Android will, will know that, okay, at this state, I should not jump, okay? I should try to jump at the very spot in order to see the uh, reward, okay? So if the uh, if the Android uh, says, uh, randomly choose a uh, precise location to jump, okay? 
then actually it may it, it is successful then the reward actually will go to the positive so this will encourage the android try to jump from that specific uh, position okay so uh, by utilizing a similar uh, concept okay uh, google did my develop the uh, alpha go okay which beats the world number one uh, go player kezia okay kezia in uh, 2017 so uh, Go is an abstract uh, strategy board game for uh, two players, okay? So uh, here we can see we uh, have many uh, playing pieces. So all these, they are actually called stone, okay, stones. So the black uh, stone represents the human components, okay? Whereas the white stone represents the alpha Go, okay? So alpha Go is the machine, okay? It's the, this one. It's the machine loaded with the deep reinforcement learning uh, ability, right? So. Uh, so from here actually it shows that the uh, alpha go can beat the very best uh, humans okay in the world okay in a very practical uh, real life uh, situations but actually you might wonder how and how the android can play with human in real life okay so in that uh, in, in that uh, spot okay actually the robot has a camera which continuously capture the bot game uh, state okay so there will be one camera facing this uh, this uh, uh, angle okay as what you are seeing okay that's what you are seeing so depending on the state okay which interact with the human component then it will perform some actions so after uh, making the actions a helper beside will assist the so will, will assist the android okay in placing uh, those two okay so this is how the games can be played okay physically okay but all in all it actually shows that the AI soon uh, may, may exceed the human in terms of some uh, ability. Okay, so uh, driven by the success okay, of uh, deep reinforcement uh, learning, we can uh, explore the applications of uh, deep reinforcement learning in 5G. Okay, so uh, as mentioned uh, earlier, there are thousands of uh, base stations surrounding the user and each uh, user may subscribe uh, to a different services such as uh, EMDB, MTC and the URLC. So again, all these three types of services are provided by a fine chip. Okay, so uh, for each of illustration, of course, I, I wouldn't draw a thousand uh, base station in this slide. Okay, so uh, I will just show a hexagonal uh, cellular area where here we have seven uh, base station. Okay, we have seven fine chip small uh, cell base station. Okay. And as you can see in the surrounding, we have uh, three uh, phones, okay? Then we also have uh, three uh, smart cameras with four autonomous uh, driving car and also one intelligent uh, traffic lights, okay? So all these, they will be uh, uh, connected to these uh, 5G networks uh, wirelessly, right? So, uh, so here actually from this uh, subsection, okay, uh, you can see actually we, I try to label with uh, two different uh, color, okay. The yellow color actually uh, indicates the base station is turned on, okay. Whereas the purple color as indicated in here, okay, uh, indicates that the uh, base station is turned off, okay. So uh, let's start the games, okay. So uh, yeah, so for 5G also we, we can treat it as a game, okay, in order to uh, so-called optimize the final uh, user experience, right? So, uh, so we label this scenario as uh, episode one, okay, as episode one. So you can imagine there is a 5G agent, a 5G uh, player, okay, that know all the current states and also all the subscriber status, okay, in, in, their, in, their, in their status, okay, in their files, right? So uh, because of the 5G network agent has not learned any experience from serving mobile users, okay, it may randomly turn on three base stations, okay, as indicated by here, okay, one, two, three, okay. And uh, of course, uh, minus it, okay, we have four base stations that are uh, turned off, okay. And because it's a random action, okay, so what is the potential reward that you might get, okay? So the reward you may get actually maybe is is the poor you uh, poor user experience in terms of the latency and speed okay so of course in that context uh, you can foresee that the telco operators will receive a lot of complaints in terms of the co connection uh, problem okay uh, on the problem right so but based on the collected rewards okay the 5g agent actually will learn and try to make adjustment on turning on and off the base station 
in the next episode, which is the episode number two. Okay, episode number two and the so forth, right? So, so come to here, okay? So the process of learning, okay? The process of learning will continue until it reach a convergence or so-called stable state, okay? As uh, observed in the figure, okay? We reach uh, episode N. Okay, so again, this is just the episode end where I uh, have some analogy to the previous reinforcement learning uh, game, the game playing scenario that I described just now, right? So uh, the state is different, okay? So in this episode, you can actually see that the state are different, okay? In terms of the number of subscribers, okay? So obviously, they are more mobile phones, okay? More autonomous driving car, intelligence, traffic light, and also the smart uh, cameras okay so in this state actually the state are different already so in uh in the current state then actually the 5g's network agents they need to make another decision means another uh, actions okay another actions so uh obviously if you need to serve uh, more mobile devices okay the 5g agents will react to turn on small base station in order to meet the heterogeneous uh, traffic uh, demands okay so as indicated by uh, this figure okay so instead of three uh, base station being turning on now we have six active uh, base station being turning on instead of uh, uh, in order to uh, meet the requirements okay so only one base station is uh, turned off right so of course uh, this is uh, just an abstract level of deep, uh, deep reinforcement learning for 5G uh, scenarios okay uh, I believe there is much more uh, we can explore with uh, this uh, power, okay, with this power. So, for example, we can actually utilize the deep reinforcement learning to uh, locate different levels of transmission power, okay, among all these base stations, okay. So, all these base stations, they can be assigned a different level of transmitted power, okay. So, the objective, of course, is uh, to pursue the green communications while meeting all the uh, traffic uh, common, uh, demands, okay. So perhaps there is one more thing that I would like to highlight. Okay, so just now I, I, I say that actually uh, if we directly play the episode one where actually the telco operators may receive the uh, may receive some complaints. Okay, so in this case the telco operators telco operators may feel uh, scared. Okay, but actually we can use the simulations to try to simulate the realistic environments of all these uh five G environments. Okay, so in that uh in that simulations, okay. We can play uh, thousands of the episode. Okay, so in fact, in terms of the uh, in terms of the research, okay, in terms of the research like this uh, paper, okay, we actually will uh, try to run over five thousand episodes in order to reach a stable state. Okay, so after five thousand uh, episodes, this so-called pre-trained network will be deployed to a uh, real uh, 5G networks, okay? So that the 5G networks can try to react to the uh, real demands, okay? So in this way, uh, uh, hopefully, okay, it will, uh, the 5G telco operators will not receive uh, any, any uh, complaints from the mobile subscriber because the 5G agents is already well learned from the past experience, okay? So I think uh, that's all for my presentations and I hope to, uh, tonight you enjoy the topic about uh, fine trees and AI. Okay, so that, this is my goal to share some uh, little knowledge about fine trees and AI with all of you. Okay, so uh, now Ken uh, will talk about the engineering. Yes. So I will pass to Ken. Okay, so uh, wow. Uh, thank you so much uh, for total time sharing today. I actually, he shared a lot. Lah where we already know some of it, like what is the running principle behind of the 5G, some experience, a successful experience from AI and the combination of this uh, 5G and AI. So I hope that this uh, webinar actually might give you some idea or even spark your interest in this uh, 5G and AI area. So in Utah, we actually offer uh, this kind of program as well. Uh, especially for the first two programs like electronics and computer network for computer networking and also electronic communications where we focus on like the topic we uh, touched just now which is the 5G and also AI where uh, total time personnel also teaching in these two programs as well. 
of course some of you might be interested in others maybe just part of it like how to write ai or how to learn about the networking we have other specific programs such as like uh, computer science software engineering even communication and networking so all those programs are listed here just a few of it uh, together with the campus and also the duration of studies so for you interested feel free to visit us as a uh, study.utah.edu.my which I stated here already and you can have a live chat with us uh, we are available daily 9 a.m to 5 p.m uh, if you feel shy to actually chat with us you can email or even whatsapp to us uh, in these two following number okay so uh, now we come to our q and s section so for those who are interested you actually can type down your question in the q and a tab so we can review it together with dr tam dr tam are you there hello yes i'm see. here <laughs> okay i right, good to see you again <laughs> yes i'm back yes so uh while waiting some uh, audience i think i see a uh, uh, questions Okay. You see a question is good. Uh, maybe we go go review it together. Yes. So uh, I I do it now. Can I? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. 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 Okay. So I think we are we have a uh, questions uh, from uh, that is how is the improvement of uh, energy efficiency when AI is integrated into a five G system, right? So uh, as I as I mentioned in five G, actually we are considered a last few deployment of the base stations where even the surrounding your area you can actually see uh, a few base stations surrounding you okay, installing around you but uh, all these base stations actually they consume a lot of the uh, power okay so by using the ai ai actually will assist us to uh, manage all these kind of base stations okay for example if you are serving 10 users how many base stations out of 1000 base stations you should turn on Another scenario is out of a, for example, if you are serving 1,000 subscribers in a cellular network, in a 5G cellular networks, how many base stations out of 1,000 base stations you should uh, turn on in order to serve all the users, right? So actually this one can be answered by the AI because just now, as I mentioned, uh, by using the deep reinforcement learning, actually AI will learn from the past mistake, past, uh, mistake. Okay, so if you learn that, okay, at a certain state, okay, where the number of subscribers is, uh, for example, 100, it should optimally uh, turn on how many base stations in order to satisfy all the demands, okay, while, uh, trying, while trying to become uh, less uh, power intensive, okay. So this is one of the directions that uh, AI is integrated into the 5G. So in other words, AI smartly control the 5G base stations. Ken, are you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here, I'm here, I'm listening, okay. Wow, oh, that's okay, good. Okay, I hope uh, this yeah, answers yes, your questions. Uh, we do have other questions come in, so let's look together as well. So... Dr. Tam, any idea which one oh, you want to answer? Let me, <laughs> let me check. Yeah, uh, maybe you can roll can through. Briefly. All right, I think I, I have one interesting question. So can mm -hmm. Professor uh, briefly explain what are some of the current research activities in AI at uh, Utah? Okay. So mm -hmm. besides from your Perfect. experience, uh, what are some of the key problems in AI since many big companies have been working on it? Okay, so there are two sub-questions. So uh, I, I would like to answer the first questions. Okay, so uh, actually Utah, we have a lot of uh, AI uh, expertise. Okay, so uh, for example, uh, myself actually are quite active in the AI research. Okay, so uh, Recently, I just got uh, international funding, which is funded by the Japan's uh, NICT. And the title is about the disaster mitigations uh, using uh, mobile edge computing and also the wireless uh, mesh uh, networking. Okay, so I can give you a scenario. Okay, so let's say disaster uh, unfortunately happened in Malaysia. Okay, and you are one of the victims who are trapped inside some uh, buildings. Okay, so 
what you will try to do in the very first place, I believe, is you will try to take your phones and to call maybe your parents in order to seek for help. Okay, but what if the disaster actually destroy all the base station? Okay, so in that case, you actually need to uh, have some wireless uh, mesh networking, okay, in order to convey your message. But again, how to actually detect, how to actually convey your message? Can you actually send your message to, the, to some uh, neighboring nodes? Okay, you can do it manually, okay, but somehow it's not very efficient, okay. From that, actually, we can employ some mobile edge computing, okay. That means actually we will have a lot of the smart camera device, okay. In fact, this is what I plan to put a lot of smart devices. They can actually using the uh, video anal analytic to detect the potential disaster scenario and the number of the victims. Okay, so through this kind of video analytic, uh, in terms of the AI, all this information there can be disseminated to others uh, areas. Uh, for example, some uh, rescue operation team in order for them to locate us. Okay, so uh, the second uh, sub questions. Okay, what are the some of the key problems in AI in many big companies? Okay, so I believe this is also a very interesting uh, question. Okay. So first thing first, uh, we need to uh, we need to uh, bear in mind that if we are trying to link to uh, AI developments in in local, okay, one of the thing that will come in mind is the privacy thing, okay, because AI is like some machine trying to get some information, or I I I maybe can label it as a steal some informations, okay, without your consent and try to make some smart decision for you. But in that case, does it mean actually it violates the uh, humans' uh, rights? Okay, so I believe this is one of the main issues in order for us to uh, progress well in uh, Malaysia's uh, AI industry. Okay, so definitely we need some guideline. Okay, on uh, what to do and what not to do in terms of the privacy uh, uh, violations. Then we only can talk about more technologies. How we actually can. Uh, deploy more advanced technology, for example, the uh, mobile net, okay, some of the uh, very lightweight neural networks, they can actually do the detections of many uh, objects. All right. Um, okay, uh, yeah, I received another question. So do Delco companies in Malaysia are ready to provide and support 5G uh, service technology, okay, maybe started from urban area? Okay, so uh, I think according to the plan that's set by the MCMC, okay, Malaysia, okay, uh, uh, travel companies in Malaysia, they, they are trying to deploy this uh, 5G within this year, okay, but that's, that is uh, before, the, before the occurrence of the COVID-19, so uh, right now, I, I can't give you a definite uh, answer uh, for that. Okay, but at least uh, one thing I can highlight is that uh, MCMC is very aggressive to push this kind of uh, 5G uh, services into the uh, commercial uh, uh, usage. Okay, in, in fact, actually the uh, MCMC, they form a national uh, 5G task force. Okay, I think in the last, in last year or in last two years, and they just completed a report, a technical report, uh, a so-called guideline on how we actually should deploy the 5 in in uh, Malaysia local. So, uh, yeah, hopefully we can see the real commercial 5G very soon. Okay. Um, let me see if need more base stations. Okay, another interesting uh, question. Since 5G need more base stations, will the radiations released by base stations will cause uh, any uh, health concern? Okay. So uh, to be frank, I received these uh, questions from uh, from all over uh, my friends and uh, our colleague. Okay, so I think to put it in simple way, okay, the, the question is, will five G cause any uh, human health issue? Okay, uh, the there is no definite answer, but what I can uh, answer you is that there is no scientific scientific uh, proof that uh, using exposed to five G uh, 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 radio wave will cause the uh, uh, hazards, hazards to the human health, okay? But uh, in fact, just now, uh, if you are reading, if uh, you were reading my slide, where I have all the uh, base station, okay? Actually, all the base station, they must obey the power, transmission power threshold, okay? P transmission power threshold. So by either using AI or some others uh, optimization, okay? 
actually all the 5G base station there must be uh, operated under a certain power threshold, which is uh, which is under the acceptable EMF level. So EMF is electric uh, magnetic uh, fields. Okay. So from the EMF uh, reports, as long as uh, humans is exposed to a below threshold, okay, then the human health should not be uh, any issue. Okay. But of course, as I mentioned just now, there is like uh, there is no scientific proof. But on the other hand, there is uh, I believe there is also lack of the scientific uh, study on uh, this part. Okay, because uh, uh, as what you know, five G is a, a very new technology, and actually we have yet to see the impact to the health issue in the next maybe next uh, uh, 10, 10 more years. Okay, something like that. Right. So uh, I would like to add more. Okay. So. If you are talking about the radiation released by the base station, okay, in fact, actually um, at our home, okay, if you are at your home, have a look at your Wi-Fi access point. Actually, the Wi-Fi access point will also radiate the uh, transmission uh, power, okay? So for the wireless uh, access point, they even operate at uh, 5 gigahertz, okay? I'm sure you all know about the 2.4 gigahertz and also the 5 gigahertz for the wireless uh, access point, okay? So this five gigahertz is or uh, is higher than the uh, than the than the five G's uh, frequency spectrum that Malaysia is planned to deploy, which should be around three point four gigahertz. Okay. So uh, in short, your Wi-Fi at home use five gigahertz frequency spectrum, whereas the five G base stations, okay, according to the plan, we may at the first phase we may actually deploy the five G base station at three point. 2 to 3.4 gigahertz, which is uh, uh, lower than, than the Wi-Fi access point, right? So, uh, Ken, are you there? Yeah, I'm a here. I, I saw a lot of questions. Lot of maybe questions. we okay. just uh, pick uh, one last I think one question. more, maybe. <laughs> yes, because we're running out of time All for right. yes. to be unable to answer. So sorry about that. Maybe you can uh, WhatsApp or email. Okay, us. a very good question. Which mm. program that I need to choose in Utah that included uh, AI uh, and uh, 5G? Okay, so of course, I think as uh, explained by uh, Mr. Ken, okay, so uh, actually the Lee Kong Chang Faculty of Engineering and Science offer a few engineering program, okay? But for the 5G's related, okay, you may have a look at the Bachelor of Engineering, uh, Electronic and Communications uh, Engineering, okay? As shown in my uh, current slide, the second uh, row, okay? The second row there. I think maybe that's all due to the time limitation, Ken? Yep, 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 no problem. So, uh, yep. so uh, thank you everyone for joining our webinar today. And also uh, thank you Dr. Tam for uh, this uh, great sharing section to everyone. I hope that actually gives some idea to all of you. So we will see you next time for other webinar. So feel free to actually follow us in Facebook. So we will keep on posting what webinar will be how, uh, for this upcoming week and in the future as well. So my name is Ken and once again, thank you uh, Dr. Tam. See you guys next time. Bye-bye. Okay, thank you. See you guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.